You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This episode is about risk in investing and entrepreneurship. I thought I would talk about this because I I had an interesting question on Facebook a while ago uh, in a discussion that I was having about risk in investing. Someone was asking me uh, back in January what I thought about Bitcoin and the opportunity of Bitcoin as an investment. If you have been watching it recently, Bitcoin has rocketed in value uh, since the beginning of the year. And um, that trend was already starting back in January and someone was asking me what I thought about it. And I was saying that I thought I thought Bitcoin was an interesting thing to to look at. Um, it does have very high volatility, um, which means that there is a potentially very big upside if you're willing to take the risk, because uh, it can increase in value very very quickly. But there's also a potentially very big downside too, because it can crash in value, and it did uh, just over a year ago. So. For me, um, when it comes to investing, I'm only willing to speculate with money that I'm prepared to lose. And since I'm not really prepared to lose very much, um, I don't do much speculation at all. Um, I just focus my investing uh, in a fixed strategy like the permanent portfolio to uh, give me uh, safe returns. And... Someone asked a question of me that uh, would I offer the same approach to entrepreneurship and you know not be willing to to risk anything and what's the difference? And I think that is a very interesting question. You know, um, entrepreneurship is risky, and I've spoken a lot about how uh, great I think entrepreneurship is as an opportunity. So, what is the difference between taking risks in entrepreneurship and in speculative investments? So that's what I'd like to talk about today. Just to start off, I do want to say a couple of things just about definitions. I'm making a distinction between investment and speculation. And you can define these things in any way that you like, but I'm just making a distinction between investment where you are simply trying to get the level of return that the market on average, that the investment markets on average Um, will give you in any particular year and speculation where you're trying to beat the market and typically speculation uh, you try and beat the market by attempting what's called market timing in other words you buy an asset that you think will appreciate much faster um, in a particular given year and you focus on putting your money in that asset that you think is going to go up a lot and you change your view about which asset that's going to be uh, depending on circumstances. So you're essentially um, picking specific stocks or specific assets. And that's where the high risk comes in, um, or both in terms of high potential upside but also high potential loss. So what's the difference between that and risking things on entrepreneurship? Well, uh, in my view... And this is just a personal view about it. You can do what you like with it. Uh, Hopefully it's useful to think about. In my view, it's very helpful to undertake things that are risky if the rewards are are, potentially great. But I personally find it important to concentrate risk in one area of my life. So in other words, if I'm going to undertake entrepreneurship which is risky and which does involve potential loss Um, there's no guarantee that your business will succeed there's no guarantee that uh, you will be able to uh, compete well in the marketplace and so forth so there's a lot of of risk involved if I'm risking uh, on entrepreneurship I don't want at the same time to be undertaking a lot of risk with my money um, in terms of speculative investments I don't want to have both the risk of a business and the risk of speculative investments because it's basically too stressful. I just don't want to have all of that risk in different areas. Uh, Warren Buffett once said 
Um, put all your eggs in one basket and watch that basket very carefully. Now, I don't believe in what he's talking about in terms of stock picking because he was referring to putting all your your um, your resources into one particular stock and, and uh, essentially trying to time the market with that stock. But I do think in life in general, um, if you're going to risk something, then it makes sense to, to just watch that one thing quite carefully. Uh, in my case, that would be entrepreneurship because then you get to focus all your effort and energy on the one area of your life where you really are taking uh, calculated risks. And the reason that I think entrepreneurship is the best place to make to take those risks is because that's where you have the most control um, the key thing about risk is about the uncertainty of the future and the best way to predict the future is to create it and that's the opportunity that you get with entrepreneurship you get to have the most influence on the outcome of your venture because you are actually creating the venture itself and you're developing the product and creating the new value and so forth. The difference with investment is that all you are doing is, or speculative investment, is that all you're doing is reallocating resources. You're selling some things and buying some other things. Now, entrepreneurs do this too. They buy stock and they sell it and so forth. But they do an awful lot more than that. They change the stock. They add value to it. They market it in specific ways. So if you think of speculative investments as something like entrepreneurship, then as, as the, quote, entrepreneur, all that you would be doing is buying in a bunch of stuff into your warehouse and then selling it. You wouldn't be doing any kind of a value add. You wouldn't be doing any marketing. You wouldn't even get to know your customers. So you'd have no control or influence over any of those things. And if you're an entrepreneur, you have far more influence on all of those things. So even though entrepreneurs do take the risks involved in reallocating resources and they do buy and sell things, they do a lot more to those things uh, before they sell them than invest speculators do when, when they uh, uh, reallocate resources. Another way to think about this is if you imagine it being like a director. Um, if the entrepreneur is a director of uh, a movie or a, a play, then he gets the actors, he hires the actors, and he's about to do a scene, so he talks to them about the scene, and he tells them what he wants to get out of it, and he, you know, he tells them how he wants it to go. They do the scene, he does a retake and says, no, I'd rather that you played it like this, and so on and so forth. And you know, he can fire actors and get a new actor in, but he also has long conversations with the actors, and he interacts with them, and he directs them. A speculator would be a director who hired the actors and then said nothing to them. He did, had no conversations with them. He just hoped that they would play out each scene as well as possible. And the only thing that he would do is every now and again fire one and get another one in. That's what's happening when you're reallocating resources, but you're not actually doing anything to those resources. You're just relying on the resources themselves and on your ability, if you like, to pick the best actors without actually having any impact on their performance. So that's the difference there. Um, I think with entrepreneurship, you just have a huge amount more control. The other issue with risk in speculation um, is that it is just a well-known fact that speculation nearly always fails. It usually fails. So if you look at any of the studies that have been done of uh, active investors versus passive investors, so in other words, an active investor is one that picks stocks and picks assets, and a passive investor just has a fixed strategy um, of a balanced portfolio between stocks and bonds and maybe some other assets um, and just re reallocates resources on the basis of a fixed strategy. If you look at all of the studies, the active investors, the majority and the vast majority of them underperform against passive investment funds. And there are a few people who manage to beat the market but the vast majority don't. And for me, I just don't think that I'm any smarter than uh, the pro traders or even than, you know, than, than the market averages itself. 
And so I prefer to uh, acknowledge that um, speculation basically doesn't work um, and that you have to be so incredibly lucky um, to get it right that, in my view, that kind of risk, um, it just isn't worth it because uh, it's so difficult to get right. But I think the other thing to bear in mind with speculation is that even if you do get it right, even if it does pay off, and for example, Bitcoin in the last couple of months has paid off big time. There's a huge rise in value. Um, but even if it does pay off, there is always a cost to any kind of risk. And that cost is for, true for entrepreneurship, it's true for speculation, even if the speculation pays off. And that cost is worry. So if you have been investing in Bitcoin, I am willing, or in any kind of uh, speculative investment, I am willing to bet that you look at your portfolio a hell of a lot more than I do and that you check the prices each day and you wonder about what's going to happen and you worry about whether or not the bubble is reaching its top and whether or not you should sell and you become incredibly preoccupied with that. And that is a cost. You know, all the time that you're spending worrying about that, you're not enjoying your life and doing productive things. Um, now, it's true, when you're an entrepreneur, you can't help but worry about your business too. And you spend a lot of time thinking about whether or not you should change a product and whether or not you should contact that, that client again and so forth. But at least you can actually, in a sense, use that in a more constructive way, I think. You can do something with it. Um, you know, far beyond just reallocating resources, you can actually change the resources that you're using as well. So, you know, if you, if you do want to be a speculator, good luck to you. I mean, obviously, it's a personal choice. Um, these are just my opinions about it. Um, my thoughts about it would be that if you are going to speculate, um, there's so much risk and worry about it. I wouldn't do that at the same time as trying to be an entrepreneur because you're just putting so much risk into your life in different ways. And also, um, you have to accept, if you're going to be a speculator, the cost of inaction, the, the fact that you're like a director who can't talk to his actors um, and you just have to hope that they're going to play well. Um, but you are taking um, a, a very, very backseat role in terms of, of what will happen in the future. You're not actually involved in creating the future, which I think um, is one of the most exciting aspects of entrepreneurship, and that's why... Um, I, I do think it's, it's good to take some risks in something like entrepreneurship, but I pre personally prefer not to try and speculate on the market because uh, I don't think that it works and because I think that kind of risk, even when if you do get incredibly lucky, it has a huge cost as well. So I hope that's uh, useful food for thought. Thanks so much for listening. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.